Well, it's Halloween, one of my favorite times of the year. There's horror movies on the TV, women dress up like sexy versions of famous characters, and everyone has an excuse to pig out on sugary foods. But as much as I love Halloween, it occurs to me that I've never really done a Halloween-themed episode before. I guess when every movie you watch has monsters in it, you don't really think of these things. Actually, you know what? What did I review this time last year? Oh, yeah. Well, anyway, today's Halloween movie is The Theater Bazaar, a horror anthology featuring both established horror movie veterans and some young up-and-comers. Now, this is the newest movie I've ever done on this show, but I still think it's a good choice because I have the DVD of it. So like most horror anthologies, the Theater Bazaar begins with a framing sequence, which in this case is provided by a Fiona Apple video. <laughs> yes, I too have looked at a rundown theater with knocked over garbage cans and nothing on the marquee and said to myself, I wonder what's inside. The theater looks kinda empty though, are they showing Oogie Loves in there? Man, these European productions of Pinocchio are getting weird. Actually, that's our host for the movie, played by horror movie veteran Udo Kier. An actor so respected, he can actually be in two Uva Bowl movies and still come out with his credibility intact. Well, I'll try, but I usually just end up making fun of them. Okay, so the first story is The Mother of Toads, about a young couple vacationing in France. Wow, wow. Sweetie, look at this. Look at the face there. Oh, hi, Mark. Okay, not really. That isn't actually the same actor. Still, you gotta admit, the resemblance is pretty uncanny, and I'm not just talking about the way he looks and sounds. Check out the acting chops on this guy. Let me see, let me have a look. I want him. It's the elder sign. One of them found out about it, beat her up so bad she ended up in a hospital on Guerrero Street. <laughs> Anyway, rather than seeing the usual tourist sites, I can't believe it's not Mark here has an interest in the occult and is doing some research. It's the Elder Sign. What are you talking about? The Elder Sign from, uh, H.P. Lovecraft, the Necronomicon and all that. Roughly translated, Book of the Dead. As luck would have it, they meet an old gypsy woman who claims to have a copy of the Necronomicon in her possession. If you are interested, you must come this afternoon. And apparently the old gypsy woman with a copy of the Book of the Dead also has a business card. I guess gypsies are more entrepreneurial in France. Alright, look, sweetie, um, why, don't, why don't you go to the spa? Go to the spa for a bit and you pick me up from the old lady's house later on. I mean, it's just down the road. I mean, you gotta understand, I mean, she says she's got a copy of the Necronomicon. I mean, I've got, I've got to check it out. Listen, honey, you go and get your nails done while I see the gypsy about the unholy artifact of unspeakable evil. I'll be back by supper, I promise. Not Mark goes to the gypsy's house and finds out that apparently her copy of the Necronomicon is real, although I gotta ask, is it common for ancient mystical tomes to have sections that look like they were made on a typewriter? Well, you're in the home of a woman who's more than likely a witch with a copy of the Book of the Dead. What could possibly go wrong? Do you like me now, my pretty one? Oh, okay, apparently nothing. Damn, I gotta go looking for more items of unspeakable evil. Hey, don't look so surprised that your boyfriend's a cheating bastard. If you knew his history, you should have seen this coming. Meanwhile, the next day... Ugh, I feel you, buddy. This one time while on spring break in Romania, I hooked up with a vampire chick. They may look good when you got the beer goggles on, but when you wake up in the morning, yikes. Not Mark tries to do the responsible thing and leave without ever calling her again, but it turns out witches are a little clingy. Why do you loathe me so much? I can give you all that other women give, and more. Yeah? Like what? Fucked up tadpole babies? Well, you screwed up really bad, but maybe if you apologize, your girlfriend will take you back. Oh. Oh. 
Okay, you fucked a toad monster and your girlfriend's dead. But look on the bright side. At least it wasn't as bad as the sex scenes in the room. What a story. What a story, Mark. Up next we have I Love You. Tja, this was my reaction after I watched Ape. Anyway, German Tim Roth here is Axel, a man who suspects his wife of cheating on him and spends his days drowning his sorrows in Romulan ale. Why does he think his wife is cheating on him? Because she is cheating on him. Ah, poor guy. I knew he should have never left, honey bunny. Turns out, though, Axel doesn't handle breakups too well. You're not going anywhere until you tell me what's going on. Really, now what? Keep me prisoner? Why don't you grow up? Hey, I'd be careful, lady. I mean, the guy is German. You don't want to end up in the middle of a human centipede, do you? Axel tries to use some of his sweaty German charm to convince her to stay, but it doesn't work. Oh, okay, never mind, I guess it does. Apparently this woman likes sleeping around so much she even has to cheat on the new guy she's running off with. Ah! Teutonic taint! Oh, and I wasn't joking about her sleeping around. It turns out this isn't the first time she's done this to Axel. Remember when I left you and went to my sister's in Paris? Awkward. So, you got any more ways to hurt the guy's feelings? Your penis and my vagina never liked each other. Well, he always was more tight with your ass anyway. Look, I know breakups can be painful, but you'll get over it. The important thing is that you both handle this like adults and everything will be fine. Okay, maybe not. I'm leaving now. I'd like to see you try and bring me back this time. Man, even when you're dead, you're a bitch. It's enough to make a guy kill himself. Ah! See? I love you. Title drop. Up next is Wet Dreams, directed by horror icon Tom Savini. And despite the title, no, he hasn't decided to pursue a career in softcore porn. Okay, maybe he has. You know what the sad part is? If that had been a normal vagina, I would have had to censor it. After all, there could be kids watching and we wouldn't want them to see anything disturbing now, would we? Oh my god, I should have wore protection! <laughs> but it turns out it's just a dream. You know, my wet dreams are never like this, but hey, whatever floats your boat, pal. This is Donnie, and he and his wife are having some relationship problems. Namely, she has a problem with the fact that he's an abusive, cheating dick. Breakfast, sir. Huh. I always thought sausages were made out of lips and asshole, but apparently I was wrong. <gasps> but it turns out that was a dream, too. Wow, this guy has some fucked up dreams. That's okay, though. Maybe Dr. Savini can help you with your problems. When's the last time you raped somebody? I rape my mother all the time. In dreams, of course. I've even killed people. Uh, are you sure this is the guy you want to see about your problems? The point is, dreams can be uh, a release. Like a, a safety valve. They allow us to... Uh, Solve dilemmas in ways that we wouldn't contemplate in real life. Take me, for example. I dream about raping and murdering my mother as a vent for my frustrations. It doesn't mean I'm weird or anything. <sighs> the moment you know you're in a dream, you can make a conscious effort to stop it. Just close your eyes and count. Three, two, one, wake up. Wait a second, he's in another dream? Did Savini watch Inception and think there weren't enough layers or something? Blah blah blah, he has dreams about his dick getting mutilated. Moving on. Another dream.
This is going to be one of those movies where every time we think something important to the story's happened, it's just going to end up being a dream. You know, that's something that really... Ugh. Ugh. I just dreamt I was a sarcastic asshole that made fun of movies on the internet. What a nightmare. Ugh. I just dreamed I was in a contrived dream within a dream gag. Thank God that's over. Thank goodness it was only a dream. But Donnie's not the only one who's been screwing around as his wife is having an affair with Savini. Wow. You look great. You look like a movie star. Well, you look like a makeup effects guy who does character roles. It was a Denver omelet. If you have time, I can make you one. Just make sure you don't tell anybody about the secret ingredient. Here's a hint. It's penis. She also deals with Donnie in a particularly gruesome way. Although there's so many dreams in this short, I'm not sure if this is supposed to be really happening. I guess you could say I... I'm stumped. Yeah. That's what I was gonna say. All I gotta do is close my eyes. Three. Two. Ah! Uh, ain't that how it always goes? There's never a dream gag around when you want one. No, do it! One. Do it! Do it! Do it! Do it! Well, looks like Donnie had a real eye-opening experience. Because she, uh, she took that thing and she cut off his... Damn it, I wanted to say stumped. I'm sorry. Ah, come on, Udo. Dracula 3000 wasn't that bad. The next short is The Accident, and I'm gonna be honest, I got nothing. I'm serious. It's a haunting, well-done short, and I couldn't think of any jokes. So I'm skipping it. Next up is Vision Stains, and no, I did not put in the deleted scenes from Requiem for a Dream by mistake. Man, looks like Michelle Rodriguez has fallen on some hard times. And once again, I can show that, but up, oh, gotta cover up the nip slip. After all, won't somebody think of the children? <laughs> Gross. The most important images that people see during their lifetime get trapped in the liquid of their eyes as they see them. Oh great, this movie got its scientific info from Horror Express. So the basic premise of this short is this woman goes around killing homeless people, steals their memories, and then writes them down in journals because... Uh... Because of me, everything they've gone through won't just disappear. I preserve their history. Yeah, if by preserve you mean end. I'm only interested in women's stories. They're the true creators. The ones who suffer. Hey, tell that to the guy from Wet Dreams. Oh, and regarding women suffering more, maybe they'd suffer less if there wasn't some crazy bitch going around killing them. Eventually, though, brutally murdering women and stealing their memories loses its thrill, and she decides to try something a little different. What do the unborn see? Think or feel? I'm gonna go out on a limb and say darkness, not much, and wet. There. Now you don't have to kill anybody. Or just jam a needle in some poor woman's stomach. Whatever, I'm getting a beer. So she gets the fluid from the baby, although how she knows she hit the eyeball is anyone's guess. And regarding what happens next, well, just watch. You're going to find out more than any living person should ever know. And you're going to regret searching for Uh, who's talking? Does God have a breathy woman's voice? Seriously, do it. Do it. <laughs> oh, come on. Stabbing yourself in the eye wasn't that funny. And this brings us to the final short of the movie, Sweets. Man, Jack White has let himself go. And I didn't even know he was dating Tina Fey. Actually, this is Estelle and Greg, and just like every other couple in this movie, they're going through a bit of a rough patch in their relationship. Maybe Greg fucked a toad monster or something, I don't know. I need some space. 
I can give you space. Look, look, I can, look, see? Tch, <laughs> this place reminds me of my dorm room in college except with less beer bottles. We see some flashbacks to when Greg and Estelle first met, and they're so saccharine it's disgusting. Literally, these two eat so much sugary food I feel like I'm gonna throw up. Ugh, how is it the grossest part of a horror movie is just two people eating? Ugh. However, it appears that the happy times are over for them and Estelle wants to break things off. Hey Greg, here's a bit of advice. Maybe the reason Estelle is breaking up with you is because you're a disgusting pig! Mental patients have better hygiene than this guy. However, Estelle offers to give Greg another chance if he attends an art gallery party with her. A party which features even more people with disgusting eating habits. I think the biggest disappointment has to be the music, though. Is this all that's left of the Velvet Underground? It's all about moderation. Moderation's not something I'm good at, unfortunately. Yeah, I can tell by your eyebrows. What, did you draw those things on with a sharpie? Can't help it, I just love masticating. Mmm, me too, it's great, isn't it? I usually like to start off my day with it, usually in the shower. Oh, masticating! Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I thought you said something else. Turns out, though, Estelle might have had another reason for getting Greg to come here, though. I'm a mess. And you are so dead. Decapitation! Ah, poor Greg. He died as he lived. Like a fucking pig. At the end, the storyteller moves on. Good advice, Udo. Let's wrap this up. So, is the Theater Bazaar a good choice for this Halloween? Well... Anthologies can be uneven due to their very nature, and this movie is no exception. The standout short for me was The Accident. Without giving too much away, it's a dreamlike examination of when a child first grasped the concept of death, and it's really more of an experimental drama than a horror story. It's a great little short and well worth seeing by itself. I also kind of liked I Love You, which is more character and dialogue driven than the other shorts. The rest of them are pretty mediocre. They have some good ideas and some great gory visuals, but they never really go anywhere that's satisfying. Overall, this isn't a great horror anthology, and it's definitely not as fun as something like Creepshow or Trick or Treat, but some of the visuals should please gorehounds, and if you're a fan of some of the people involved, it might be worth a look. Well, that's all for now. Until next time. <laughs> It makes me feel so special. <laughs>